The foreign minister from Germany is heading to Israel today to try and de-escalate tensions after what we saw over the weekend, that unprecedented attack on Israel by Iran. 300 drones and missiles launched at Israel. Fortunately, 99.9% of them were taken out. The Israeli military displaying one of the estimated 100 or so ballistic missiles that were fired on Israel on Saturday. The head of the defense committee in the Israeli parliament, the Knesset, saying a number of potential options on how to respond are all on the table and have been presented to the Israeli war cabinet. The moment the retaliation will come, it will be quite clear to the Iranians and the rest of the world that, uh, that uh, Israel will continue defending itself whenever necessary from whatever aggressor will be facing. 99% of those incoming weapons intercepted either by Israel's air defense system, the Iron Dome, or by an international coalition that included British, American, French, Jordanian pilots. As for what Israel may do, well, it could be a direct attack on Iran, or it could be on Iran's proxies. Uh, some of those groups, such as Hezbollah, the Houthis, uh, Hamas, and others in the region, uh, could also be asymmetrical. We know that Israel has targeted uh, Iran's nuclear program in the past. There have been assassinations, as well as the stealing of nuclear secrets. Uh, a lot of different options for Israel right now. Let's bring in CTV's Adrian Gobriel. He is in Istanbul in Turkey and is joining us with more on what the response could be from Israel. Adrian, I know it's hard to decipher here, but obviously uh, they're taking their time deciding what they might want to do, and they're under pressure not to overreact. Yeah, that's right. You just ran through some of the options in front of them, Todd. We are hearing a U.S. intelligence report that suggests that uh, the Israeli Defense Forces are looking at a potential narrow and limited strike inside Iran, but the repercussions of that could be far-reaching depending on what it is. Uh, you know, we've seen shadow warfare between them for so long. Could there be uh, a cyber attack or could it be something more direct, more blunt, uh, like a, stri a strike on a base, perhaps a, an Iranian base where, where some of the missiles were launched from during the weekend attack? Uh, with each passing hour, each passing day, everyone is watching closely what Israel's next move will be. Yeah, we know that Iran targeted a lot of military facilities in Israel on Saturday and Sunday, you know, intentionally trying to keep away from civilian targets. But, you know, in, in the middle of, you know, a major barrage, anything could have happened. There could have been fatalities. Fortunately, there were not this time around as well. But we're seeing a number of different, you know, other countries, allies of Israel. We talked about Germany, the U.S. Uh, and others, the U.K., trying to say, look, you know, you've got to be careful here not to turn this into a regional war. Because as you're rightly pointing out, Adrian, up until now, for decades, it's been kind of a, a shadow war, but nothing directly. Well, that was broken on Saturday by the Iranians. Yeah, indeed. And, and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is really traversing a precarious perch here. On one hand, you know, he's trying to thread the needle and not uh, uh, upset his uh, united you know, coalition. But at the same time, he doesn't want to offend and further distance himself in Israel from allies in the West. And, and so exactly how he's going to respond is a topic of great interest. World leaders are watching. As we know, Canada has told Israel to take their successful defense of Iran's offensive all over the weekend on Saturday into Sunday as a win. Uh, they're asking, you know, for, for cooler heads to prevail, for, for people not to use their emotions, but to use their heads as we as we look at this. And, and there is a concern of a wider regional war. You know, speaking with people here today in Istanbul, they're concerned, uh, you know, that we could see a regional war. You know, there's been lots of, of discussion about a possibility of ones going back to October 7th when Hamas entered into Israel. Well, now it's looking a lot more plausible. And that has people concerned because it could be a war the likes of which we've never seen before. And neither side has shown an ability to concede. And Todd, therein lies part of the danger. Yeah, we're just showing a map, Adrian, what we've got you here of some of the other uh, proxy groups that Iran supports, like Hezbollah, Hamas, Islamic Jihad, the Houthis, mm -hmm. armed groups in, in, in Iraq and Syria. One other question, I know you're looking at this too. Uh, you know, the, the fact that as a result of what happened, Adrian, over the weekend, you know, world attention has shifted temporarily, no doubt, but away from the ongoing war in Gaza. Uh, and, you know, some of these countries mm -hmm. like Iran have said, you know, we, we, this is part of the Israeli strategy now to take the world's attention away from, you know, uh, what they're doing in, in Gaza as well, because that, that conflict obviously is ongoing. 
It is, and and it still needs to be top of mind for Benjamin Netanyahu as well for for many of us. Uh, you know, overnight last night, another child died in Gaza. A young girl, uh, gravely injured, was pulled from the rubble. Uh, you know, here uh, in in Istanbul, in Turkey, we heard from the president today. He's pointing the finger directly at Netanyahu, saying he is responsible for the instability in the region. And of course, uh, there are many players in this region who are concerned for Gaza, as well as many across the world and in the West who are concerned about what we've been seeing play out uh, for months now. Uh, and, and world leaders have, have been, you know, in some respects, trying to tame Benjamin Netanyahu, though they've been yielding little results for months now. And so will their calls for, uh, for, for de-escalation be heard this time? We're going to have to wait and see. Yeah, Adrian Gobriel on the ground for us in Istanbul, Turkey today. Uh, good to see you, Adrian. Stay safe. Thanks for this. Thanks, Todd.